Making games is hard. I think everyone has at least some understanding of that fact. For the best AAA titles, it can take teams comprising thousands of extremely talented people. So what if you add none of that? And that is the reality of working as a solo developer. Of course, your games aren't as complex or beautiful as those AAA titles, but if you want to see success, it still requires you to be at least proficient in programming, game design, sound design, UX modeling, 3D modeling, UI design, texture, foley recording, marketing, am I doing that bit right? And a whole bunch of other stuff, but I won't get into that, otherwise we'd be here all day. Not to mention you're often doing that on top of education or work or both. I'm so tired. And even after that, you have no guarantee anyone will actually buy your game. For my game, Build Fight Game, which is a class-based FPS game set in a Minecraft-style voxel world, I had to implement a performance procedure generated voxel world system, as well as proper netcode, which includes support for manipulating the world, and firing your weapons, moving around, all while minimizing the chances of people finding exploit. And while we're on the topic, one of the best things you can do to support me and my project is to wishlist it on Steam using the link in the description. This makes sure you'll be notified when it's released or goes on sale, and helps inform the Steam algorithm that people are actually interested in the game and it's not just shovelware. Thanks! But even after all that, all the mesh generation and netcode, that's not the worst experience I've had working on this game. Programming is my passion. Even when it goes wrong, there is a certain catharsis in fixing stuff and bugs, and I just can't get enough of that. I feel like I'm constantly learning new things and getting slightly more proficient, and that's awesome. So what is the worst part? Maybe the art? The modeling? The sound effects? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. It's this. Yep, that little innocuous little title screen represents the worst single experience I've had working on this game so far. But to understand that, we have to go all the way back to the start. Placeholder UI, which was added literally on the first day of development. Basically the only thing that changed on that title screen is the font, some minor styling and the introduction of an options menu. Making this ugly menu was actually really easy since I was using Unity's built-in UI system referred to as UGUI. In UGUI, all your UI elements are part of the same space as everything else, the actual 3D scene, including your player, all objects in the game, and the world itself. The benefit of this is that it makes it really easy to kitbash basic and functional UI, however it makes it not very well suited to creating actual well-designed user interfaces. Trying to make anything of high quality with UGUI requires you to sort of mindlessly add different UI components and layout groups and alignments to hopefully make it look decent and then realise that all of that only works on your reference resolution and anyone playing at any different resolution than your monitor will have to play button cut off at the side of the screen or something. It sucks. But then I released my first devlog, which a surprising amount of people saw, and I realised that this placeholder UI wasn't really going to cut it. So I made the decision to overhaul the game's entire UI to something more high quality looking. There was a brief moment where I considered doing this with UGUI so I could avoid having to rewrite all of my UI code to support the new system, but the idea of desperately wrangling with UI components till I have something half decent did not appeal to me. So, well, what's the alternative? Well, there's a lot of third-party UI libraries for Unity which offer a better experience. However, money. So instead I opted to use Unity's own UI tool, a free framework created by Unity to replace UGUI. The principles of UI Toolkit will be familiar to anyone with experience of web design, with Unity using their own markup language UXML and Stylesheets USS to define UI rather than using game objects. That's then nicely rendered on top of everything separately. It also includes support for a visual UI builder where you can change things using a nice GUI rather than having to write all the UXML by hand. Great! In theory, this workflow makes creating good looking UI a breeze. And at first it did! I was able to create this updated title screen which looks and feels a thousand times better than the previous placeholder title screen. Then I just had to make the options menu and... I am going to commit acts of violence. <sighs> okay, some context. In my game I use a custom built system that stores data in a configuration file. I did this so I could give players maximum control over more complex settings without putting it all into an options menu and also to make it easy for me to expose things to that config file. Since in developing the new UI, I had to rewrite all of my UI code anyway, I decided to create a system to automatically generate the options menu based on which values from the config file I wanted to be exposed. In theory, all I'd have to do was add it to the editor and define how I wanted the data to be represented, and that is just put it in the options menu, easy peasy. In theory. In practice, I encountered the toughest battle of my life. The built-in drop-down control. Yep, that's right, a f drop down. But why was this such a pain, you ask? Well, thank you for being such an engaged audience member. I bet you wish this to the game on Steam as well, didn't you? Oh, you're just the best. <clears throat> Sorry, I got slightly sidetracked there. Anyway, the reason for this pain was style. He has no style. He has no grace. 
As I kind of touched on earlier, the UI toolkit lets you use style sheets, which is basically the Unity equivalent of CSS. Style sheets are just used to define how your UI looks. It could be anything from font size on text to the background image used by a button. For my workflow, I mostly use classes to style my UI. Classes are essentially tags that you apply to components that contain a bunch of style options to apply to those elements with that class. You can also detect the class through script, which I use to create some nice functionalities such as the sound effects when you hover over or click on an element. So what's the problem here? Well, in truth, there kind of almost isn't one until you start to use some more advanced components. You see, many of Unity's built-in controls have sub-elements, such as labels or buttons, which are effectively locked off to the UI builder. A dropdown is just a dropdown, even if behind the scenes it has a label and a separate container. And that label and separate container do not have their styles available for me to modify. I can't apply classes to them, so I can't make them look how I want them to look. That is annoying and stupid. There are two primary ways to get around this. The first is to create these elements yourself from scratch. I'm not doing that or to override the classes already used. You see, those baked-in sub-elements all have their own built-in styles, which I can override using my own style sheet. Or at least, I should be able to override them. I can override them, right, Unity? Just kidding, yeah, no, I can override them, it's fine. After a little too much pain, here is a properly stylized drop-down and... What was that? Yo, I'm really sorry, okay? What is wrong with you? Why are you blue? It's blue. Why is it blue? Okay, well, Unity gives us the UI debugger so we can see exactly what classes are being used by these built-in sub-elements. So we can just see what's influencing this label here. So from the debugger, I can remove some of these, which means that there's these two classes remaining. And oh, look, I've, I've overridden them. I must have uh, accidentally put them. None of these are set to blue. No, 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 there's an explanation for this. Upon closer inspection, it's only blue when this uh, focused value is true. Within USS, there's this thing called pseudo classes, which is also taken from CSS, which basically makes separate styles that activate under certain conditions. You can use this, for instance, to have a base button class and a separate button class when the button is hovered over, which maybe increases the size or changes the sprite. So I just need to make an override for the focused condition then, surely. So I go in and I do that. For both of these classes, I make new overrides for the focus condition, which goes and changes every single possible value that could possibly be interfering with that color. Which, by the way, is a horrific way to design something that takes away all modularity. If I later want to have a different dropdown with different styling, I know I can't do that without some extra setup, which shouldn't be required. Thanks for making me do this, Unity. But anyway, I try that. And it's still blue! At this point, my soul was filled with nothing but rage. I spent hours debugging this, doing what was already my least favorite part of game development. I mean, I seriously do not like doing UI work. So I took a break. Smart. And then when I got back, I did this. Yep, that's right. One f***ing line of code. Not clean code, mind you. Dirty, dirty code, but necessary code. Let me explain. So you know how those built-in Unity controls don't reveal their sub-elements? Well, if you have a reference to the elements in code, you can fetch those sub-elements and do stuff with them. So I did something horrific. Something that never should have been necessary in the first place. I got the label component that I didn't want to be blue. And I just flagged it as not focusable. If it's only blue when it's focused and you can't focus it, then problem solved, right? Right? What the f*** is this? The UI debugger says it's not focused, and yet, it is still blue! Ugh. What do I even do at this point? I was supposed to be working on implementing the next player class, but after the success of that last video, thanks guys, I thought adding some polish would be important. And yet I have spent basically a whole last day on trying to change the colour of a f***ing label. So I gave up. Because it's just some blue text, man. When you're making a game as a solo developer, you always have to prioritize your time and your tasks because there's only so much one person can do. Sure, if you're on a team of a thousand people, then you can and probably should spend days making the text look right. But I am, in fact, less than 1,000 people. And there comes a time when you have to just say, 
Yeah, this text is blue. I don't know why. I might figure it out later, or I might not. But at the same time, there are parts where you do have to get everything absolutely feeling perfect. For instance, I have and will continue to spend a very long time tweaking all the items in the game to get the feel and balance just right. Something that will be particularly difficult when I come to implement the sniper- Whoa, spoilers! Sorry, I think I got carried away there. But if you want to hear about that, you'll just have to subscribe for the next video. Or if you can't wait, then uh, you can join my Discord where you'll get consistent updates about the game's progress. Thank you so much for watching this intermittent little video I made before working on the next bigger and better video in the next week, I hope. This actually did turn out to be longer than I expected, but here we are. Once again, remember to wish us the game on Steam. I've been Peter K. Coates, and I'll see you next time.